This is where we see the digital border of the future all coming together. It's about the seamless journey. It isn't, and that doesn't just apply to people, by the way, it's the seamless journey for freight as well. It needs to have that approach through that. The only way of enabling that is through digital preclearance. So that's the ability, again, to make decisions before things arrive at the inspection point. We have to move away from the idea that either immigration is, is a line in an airport or a line on a map at a, a border. We need to make multiple border strategies and make decisions throughout the life of the journey. And re in reality, you could start making those decisions a year in advance of travel. If somebody applies for a travel authorization that lasts for multiple years, you can start making decisions on somebody's eligibility then. It doesn't have to be when they arrive in the immigration hall. The other element that we're seeing, and this, this helps with the sort of the free movement of people, um, but also with the security elements, is the dynamic border. So previously, immigration policies changed very infrequently. A couple of times a year, there would be new rules applied to the border. During COVID, we were making changes to border admission rules two or three times a week. Now, that was a challenge, but if you've got the right border infrastructure in place and the right operational processes, you have the ability now to have a much more dynamic border that can respond to threats much more quickly, that can also open up much more quickly as well. So that dynamic border um, is, is very exciting. The integrated border, um, this normally refers to a, a real sort of utopian desire to link together all data relating to passenger, freight and trade into one organisation and have a, a really enriched set of data to make targeting rules on. It actually can be more simple than that. Integrated border management is around departments coming together and working more effectively. We've often seen, particularly customs and immigration, don't talk very effectively. You can have a much better border process if they work together. Um, one of the things that's being done in Europe is something called the Passenger Information Unit, or the Passenger Targeting Unit, where you literally have immigration, customs, and policing all in the same department. Now some of them are including health as well, but the sharing of information between departments gives better decisions, enabling you to make a more seamless journey uh, available to people. Advanced risk assessment is an exciting area, uh, particularly with data science, artificial intelligence and machine learning. That ability to understand outliers, but also to process the vast majority of legitimate goods and people more effectively, and then enable scarce resource at the border to, more, to be more focused on those elements that could cause harm to a nation. Um, I'll come back to digital identities in a moment, because um, that's really where I think it's going to drive the next step. One of the problems we have in the industry, however, is the quality of data. Um, doesn't matter whether it is cargo or, or, or passengers. Um, passengers often enter their information themselves. Um, the data quality is often not good. Uh, and of course, the old adage of rubbish in and rubbish out absolutely applies. If a government is trying to process risk, process against watch lists, and the information is, is rubbish, then they need to do something with it when they see the person themselves. The airline industry has changed, and indeed structures haven't taken place. Most check-ins now don't take place at the airport. They check in at home on your mobile phone. So the airline doesn't actually see you as a traveller until really you're boarding. There's no chance to really intervene and get that good quality data. So we've got systems to ensure and help with the quality data aspect. However, with the advent of digital identities, that's where I think uh, the data quality issues will be resolved as well. So, IATA, um, the, sorry, ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, again a UN body, um, works on the standards for everything from passports um, to identity cards, and indeed they have come up with some standards around something called the Digital Travel Credential, DTC. This is an electronic copy of your passport. Now, we've actually been able to do that for a long time. Um, we created a, a solution for a digital passport for the US Customs and Border Protection, US CBP, uh, in 2014, so nearly 10 years ago. 
The difference now is you can open up the chip from the passport, I'm using a scan of the data page, and then you can verify it against the ICAO public key directory. So this is the same directory that all passport issuers send the, the digital keys to, and that means that we can have a verified digital copy of your passport on the phone. Importantly, not only does that resolve the issue for all the standard data information, but it now has your biometrics on there as well. And that enables you to then share that if you choose to, and using the right technology for something called selective disclosure, um, enables you to decide what you want to share with whom. That can then create a whole raft of opportunities around a seamless arrival process, creating biometric galleries for boarding, um, as well as uh, exiting a country. So we're really excited by digital travel credentials, and it's something we're now working on with many, many governments. The technology is proven. What we need to do is work with the governments to ensure the regulations um, permit uh, digital travel. So we expect to see much more of that, and indeed we are working with some African nations to look at potential trials for this as well.